welcome to worship. Thank you for joining us. My name is Pastor Stephanie Lape. We are at Cross and Crown Lutheran Church in Rancho Cucamonga. Welcome to our congregation and welcome even if you are outside of our congregation, but still joining us today. We're so glad you're here. We have some announcements today. I invite you to have a small bowl of water with you so that you can touch it and remember your baptism later in the service. And also I invite you to have a candle so you can light it and remember that Christ is with us all and binds us all together. Today, which is when you're watching this, I'm assuming Sunday, February 7th, there is a meeting Sunday, February 7th at 1015 over Zoom. So if you are part of our congregation, we are having a congregational meeting to look at and adopt our budget for this coming year, 2021. So please head on over to Zoom. You should have received an email invitation with the link there in the, in the email. Just click on that link to be ushered into the Zoom room. Or if you don't have the computer access to do that with a camera on your computer, you can also call in. And there's a phone number there on that email as well. This Wednesday, we are having our final study of the Enneagram, that personality tool that's so helpful in understanding ourselves and one another. That study is at 7 o'clock p.m. this Wednesday over Zoom as well. And you should have received, or you will receive rather, a, uh, a link to that Enneagram study. There is no Friday Bible study coming up this Friday. That's because we had to do some rearranging in scheduling because we are preparing for the wedding of Danielle Tuominen and Chris Bauman. So make a note of that, please. There's no James Bible study, but we will come back and resume that the following uh, Friday. And our warmest congratulations to Danielle and to Chris and to the entire Tuominen family and the Bauman family. We're so excited that you get to be married and start your life together. We're having an incredibly small wedding, just the immediate family of both of these people on the steps of the church at Crossing Crown. They will have a much bigger celebration, a wedding and reception. They're planning that for November when hopefully this whole COVID thing will be much more dealt with. So let's all wish them our, our best wishes ahead. Soon we will begin our Lenten journey and that begins with Ash Wednesday, February 17th. Uh, you will have a small packet of ashes mailed to you. They come from the company called Old Lutheran. And so you'll be getting a small packet of that. You can mix them with a little bit of olive oil if you want to, or just use them as they are. There's a letter from me that will be included in that mailing describing these ashes and how to use them. And then we will have a, an Ash Wednesday service over YouTube at 6 p.m., so you can join the YouTube channel at six o'clock or later, and that video will stay up so that you can have your own Ash Wednesday service. In that service, I'll ask you at that time if you would like to make it the sign of the cross on your head with ashes. If you did not get our ashes because you're not on our church email list, you could also use any other kind of ashes or even some, some dirt or some eyeshadow if you want to. Anything that makes that kind of smudgy look of the cross on your head. We have to get creative during this uh, COVID time, but still we will have an Ash Wednesday service and remember the meaning and the significance of what that is all about. So I invite you to join us for that. The following Wednesdays in Lent, we will have our Lenten series. That series will last from uh, February 24th through March 24th. And during those Wednesdays at seven o'clock at night over Zoom, we will have discussion groups that is both a Bible study and also there's some really good, meaningful and fun activities that we will be doing. Uh, the focus this Lent is on community. And you know, many of us really do miss community right now. We miss being together and we're remembering that we still are community in, in ways that sometimes we might not think about or might take for granted. So the focus is on community. There will be a new focus every night. More information will be coming out in the mail to you shortly. Thank you so much, all of you, for sending in your offerings and your tithes. We really do appreciate your generosity. The street address and also our website are printed out on the description box below this video. So please either mail in your offering or give securely online. 
We ask you as always to do the three things that help our YouTube algorithm, meaning give us more advertising and get us more available to the public. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. Give the video a thumbs up and all of our videos, that really helps. And then share these with people if you find that they are meaningful to you. Thank you for doing that. Okay, at this time, let us now light our candles. This is the Christ candle, which reminds us that Christ is with us all in the church sanctuary, as well as in each of our homes as we gather. May the peace of the Lord be with you. We worship in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rain to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls. Breathe your peace on your church when what we feel is fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Remind us of your love and of one another, companions on this journey. Make us one risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Healing Lord, by your goodness, you healed many who were ill, even raising the dead to life. Restore us to new life, healing our hearts, minds, and spirits, so that we may proclaim praise and gratitude for your compassion to all who will hear. In the name of the one who is himself new life, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Good morning. Our first reading today comes uh, to us from Psalm 119, verses 105 through 107. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. I have taken an oath and confirmed it, that I will follow your righteous laws, that I have suffered much. Preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading today comes to us from the seventh chapter of Luke, verses 1 through 17. After Jesus had finished all his sayings in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. A centurion there had a slave whom he valued highly, and who was ill and close to death. When he heard about Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders to him, asking him to come and heal his slave. When they came to Jesus, they appealed to him earnestly, saying, He is worthy of having you do this for him, for he loves our people, and it is he who built our synagogue for us. And Jesus went with them, but when he was not far from the house, the centurion said, sent friends to him to say, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Therefore, I did not presume to come to you, but only speak the word and let my servant be healed. For I also am a man set under authority with soldiers under me, and I say to one, go, and he goes, and I say to another, come, and he comes, and to my slave, do this, and the slave does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him, and turning to the crowd that followed him, he said, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. When those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the slave in good health. Soon afterwards, he went to a town called Naim, and his disciples and a large crowd went with him. As he approached the gate of the town, a man who had died was being carried out. He was his mother's only son, and she was a widow, and with her was a large crowd from the town. 
When the Lord saw her, he had compassion for her and said to her, Do not weep. Then he came forward and touched the bier, and the bearer stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to you, rise. The dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized all of them, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has risen among us, and God has looked favorably on his people. This word, him, uh, this word about him spread throughout Judea and all the surrounding company, country. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace to you and peace from God our Creator, Christ our Savior, and the Holy Spirit our Sustainer. Amen. I have a good friend, Julie, and both of her parents developed COVID, and it did not look very good for quite a while. Uh, she did a whole lot of work helping them with their insurance and medical care, and uh, she didn't know if she would lose both of her parents. Miraculously, they both recovered and they, they left the hospital and they're doing really well and we give thanks to God for that. I have another friend, Anthony, and uh, his father died and th from COVID and then a, a few weeks later, he found out his mother died also from COVID, but he wasn't allowed to be there at the deaths of his parents. So Julie prayed for healing for her parents and so did Anthony. And yet Julie's parents recovered and Anthony's parents didn't recover. What are we to make of this kind of thing? Are we to be people who say, well, God must have heard some prayers for healing and not others? Or God must have cared more about Julie or her parents than about Anthony and his parents? Well, of course not. We would not say something like that, something so cruel. My dad had a brain aneurysm. He shouldn't have lived through it. And he had this experience uh, one day at his house and he got in his car and drove on the freeway himself to the emergency room where they did emergency surgery. And the doctor said that there's no way he should have survived that aneurysm or that surgery, but miraculously he did. And he lived many years after that and then he developed cancer, and we prayed for healing for him then, but he died from cancer. What are we to make of those kinds of prayers? That at some point our prayers were heard by God, and thanks be to God for that, and then at other point uh, God didn't care, God turned his back, God said, I'm not interested in healing. Those are such difficult things to think about, these issues of healing, and and who does God choose to cure and who does God not choose to cure? And in fact, all of us don't get out of here alive on the one hand. All of us in 100 years or maybe 150 years, we will all not be here to walk and talk and, and say that God has healed us. On the other hand, of course, all of us do get out of here alive because we will have eternal life with God. So these issues of healing and God curing us or not, they really plague us. We don't understand a lot about our prayers for healing or how God works, especially right now during COVID, where our nation alone in less than a year has said goodbye to 435,000 Americans. That's a significant loss. Imagine all of the families, all of the loved ones grieving. And of course, a lot more people than that recovered from COVID. And so a lot of people are saying, thank you, God, for that prayer of healing being answered. There are different types of healing. And I think that we are often thinking about the kind of healing that we might hope for in terms of a cure. You know, God heal my COVID cure me of this disease. In today's gospel, we see several different types of healing going on because healing is a broader category than just curing a disease. Healing is a huge category of wellness, well-being, 
whether or not we have the cure to a disease, what ails us or what ails our loved ones. In this passage we heard today from Luke, Jesus hears that a centurion has a slave and the centurion is close to the slave and values the slave and wants the slave to be made well, wanting a cure. Jesus hears about this secondhand and then decides to heal this slave. So many issues are going on here. First of all, we don't believe that Jesus would ever support slavery, the idea of some people being inferior or superior to others, because we are all equal in the eyes of God. We don't believe that Jesus would say it's okay for people to own other people. We also know the relationship between Jesus and the centurions. Centurions are not only Roman soldiers, and remember the Romans were occupying Israel at the time, and the Israelites, Jesus was one of them, were very oppressed, put down people. But a centurion wasn't just a Roman guard or a Roman soldier, a centurion was a Roman officer. Coming from the uh, root word, meaning having a hundred people at least under him, centurion. So this Roman officer, somebody in charge of the brutality going on with Israelites, uh, asked Jesus for a favor, a favor of love, wellness, compassion, and healing of the slave. This is a complicated request in a complicated relationship. And Jesus ends up healing the relationship. So that's the first type of healing we see here. Not just the physical healing of the slave who is ill, but the healing of a centurion anyway, maybe not all of them, with an Israelite. How many of our relationships need healing? Where do we pray to God for healing in our relationships? We often point to our enemies, political enemies, religious enemies, and we, we don't ask for healing, perhaps, in those relationships. We ask for cures for our sicknesses and sicknesses for our family, but do we turn to God and say, God, please show us how to heal those rifts between me and what I perceive to be enemies. The next kind of healing that we see here is how in the story there was a healing between the centurion's own fear and the centurion's faith. The centurion sent word, Jesus, I know that you will heal this person even from afar because I too tell my people under me what to do and they do it. And so Jesus, I know that you can heal this person from afar. And Jesus commended this man's faith. Jesus commended that this man did not just have fear and doubt and anxiety with the sick slave, but also had real faith and trust in the healing power in the word of Jesus Christ. There was a healing in that own person between their panic that the slave was sick and their own faith that Jesus would take care of things. That's a kind of healing. And do we pray for that? Do we pray, God, please heal in me, in my heart, that sense of anxiety and panic and doubt and fear? Do we ask God to bring healing to us when we're struggling, stressed, anxious, angry, sad? Jesus, help me to have that kind of faith so that I can experience your healing, even just in my own soul, in my own spirit. Next, we see in Luke that a widow's son was healed. He was dying and Jesus touched part of what was carrying him and he rose to life, bringing life from the dead. That's an incredible kind of healing not only a cure for someone who's sick, but a cure for someone who's at death's door or past death and beyond. Now we know that this son didn't live forever. He eventually did have his last breath and heartbeat here on this earth. And yet we believe that Jesus brings us all to new life, like this person, like my friend Anthony's parents, like my dad, even when we don't have a cure. We take our last breath here and our first breath 
with God. We have experienced a lot of COVID around our congregation. There have been many members of our congregation who have had COVID or their loved ones have had COVID as well. We're constantly in prayer for all of the people that are affected by this insidious and invisible virus. We're excited that many people now are getting the vaccine, and so we're looking forward to the day where we can have a handle on this virus. And yet our congregation has been so affected. We have lost people. We even lost one beloved member of our congregation, Vince Vittorio, to COVID. And many, many more are struggling with this and their loved ones are struggling. We will only see the loss and the grief for years to come. So we don't make light of when people don't seem to have the cure that they want. However, we do proclaim with great celebration that Jesus does bring to new life all of us, even when we pass death's door. And we know that Vince is celebrating in a place where there is no suffering, no struggle, no pain. The same with my dad, Anthony's parents, and any loved ones you might have lost to COVID or anything else. Well, when we look at these stories, these different types of healing, we also know if we're rational thinking people, we also know where healing isn't occurring. For instance, Jesus healed the rift between the Israelites and centurions in that one relationship that he had with the centurion, but there were other centurions who arrested Jesus and crucified him. And the Romans went on to occupy Israel for many more years to come. So clearly he healed some situation with the Romans and the Israelites, but not all. He did not also address the entire issue of slavery at that point and heal that kind of relationship as well. He healed the rift in that one centurion between the centurion's fear and faith. But Jesus hasn't done that all with all of us all the time or else none of us would ever be struggling with fear, with doubt, with anxiety or anger or insecurity or all of those difficult emotions. Similarly, he healed the widow's son, but she was still a widow. He did not bring back her departed husband. She, he didn't heal that sadness, that grief in her that she had lost uh, her husband. So we look very critically at these scriptures and we go, okay, Jesus, you're healing some things, but not healing others. Or you're healing uh, Julie's parents, but you're not healing Anthony's parents. Or God, you healed my dad once. Why can't you heal him again? Why do I have to say goodbye to him for now on this physical plane? And we get so frustrated because we want an exact science. We want to know the mind of God. We want to understand healing. We want to understand this realm of being cured or not. Or we just give up on the whole thing. And we say, forget it. I can't trust you, God. I'm not even going to pray for healing anymore. I'm going to back out of this relationship. And yet we're asked to walk a middle road, a road where we don't get all the answers. We don't get an exact science. We cannot understand why Julie's parents were healed of COVID and cured, and yet Anthony's parents were not. We cannot understand these things that only exist in the mind of God. We are asked, though, to not stop praying for healing. We are asked to not stop hoping that God heals. Of course, we pray for one another. We surround each other in prayer. That's all we can ever do. And yet, the middle road is trusting God, whether or not God heals in the ways and in the times we want. So God will bring healing. God brought ultimate healing to all of those 435,000 people that died from COVID and all of your loved ones that have died from COVID or anything else. God brought healing to my dad. God brought healing to Anthony's parents. God brought a kind of healing that's greater, that's deeper, that's more lasting than any cure we will ever know. 
And so when we pray for healing, whether it's from our own bedrooms in private, whether it's in a sanctuary, whether it's full of people, whether it's as we're driving in the car and pleading, imagine how many prayers God has heard from the beginning of humanity till now, asking God, please heal my child, my spouse, my parent, my friend. God hears those prayers. God cares about those prayers. God cares about you. That's what we can gain with our understanding of this Luke text today. Jesus does care about healing. If Jesus didn't care, he wouldn't have healed the centurion's slave. He wouldn't have brought to life this widow's son. He wouldn't heal those people in those places where you and I have prayed for it. Jesus wouldn't have given us a resurrected life if Jesus didn't care about you or me or care about healing. Jesus still is the great healer, the great physician, healing our relationships, healing our spirits, healing our bodies, healing us eternally. And yet the exactness of it, the time and place, the details, we must hand over to God. We must trust that the great healer knows more than we do even in our deepest prayers. God sees you and God cares. So let us today commit one more time to turn our hearts, our minds, our wills, and our trust over to our compassionate God who made the universe and all of us in the first place who cares about your loved ones much more than you or I ever could, and who has offered us lots of healings along the way, and then culminating with that ultimate healing as we meet him face to face in that place where there is no suffering, where there is no pain, where there is only love, where there is only joy. Thanks be to God. Amen. We now confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Sisters and brothers, our baptismal vows call us to compassion and mercy on behalf of those in need. We offer our prayers now for the church and the world. Heal the church, O Lord, and protect it from hypocrisy, oppression, and injustice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heal the world, O Lord, and use us to bring about your abundant providence for all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heal the nations, O Lord, and turn us from selfishness and violence towards cooperation and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heal all those suffering in mind or spirit, whether they're suffering from COVID-19 or anything else. Lord, grant them the knowledge of your great love and care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing those, heal those suffering in body, O Lord, whether they suffer from COVID-19 or anything else, and restore them all to wholeness in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heal our assembly, O Lord, and deepen our faith in your eternal promises. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Please offer aloud any other prayers on your hearts.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for the healing you have worked through all the saints before us, all those who have, you have received into your eternal rest. Please use us to bring your wholeness to the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, you revealed your Son in the waters of the Jordan and anointed him with the power of the Holy Spirit to proclaim good news to all people. Sanctify us by the same Spirit, that we may proclaim the healing power of the gospel by acts of love in your name. Amen. Let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive your blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.